From Los Angeles, I'm Brad Lamack, and welcome to Inside the Business of Acting. I wrote this book. Well, you, you know, you've heard about it. It's a good book. It's a good book. Well, we'll, yeah, it's a good book. Talk about that. <laughs> I wrote this book called The Business of Acting, which is designed to empower actors on their career journeys. And on this particular series, we are talking to people who are working actors in industry, pros above their career journeys, turning points along the way, and, and lessons that have been learned all in our uh, mission to empower you with these conversations. So wherever you are watching us, welcome and thank you for being here. And to Michael Donovan, who is a pal, a pal and absolutely. I thank you for doing yeah. this. Okay. This is this it's fun. Is good. It's important. Yes, it is. Well, important. we've had these conversations. We have. You've come to my class, and mm -hmm. I've come to yours. Absolutely. And, and so we always find that um, there's always so much more we want to teach actors beyond just yeah. memori as we say, memorizing their lines mm -hmm. and finding their marks and being able to say the lines when somebody says action. But we'll talk about all of that. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out how it is that you went to a college that was already named after you. Oh, <laughs> St. <Saint> Michael. <laughs> Vermont. Uh, Vermont, yeah. I just, my parents were thinking about retiring to Vermont and my mother said, uh, why don't you look for a college in Vermont? I'm like, okay. And found this amazingly wonderful little school in, right outside of Burlington that has mm -hmm. an extraordinary fine arts department. And uh, so I ended up there and graduated with a degree. I have a degree in fine arts and in English, double major, and I have a minor in music. And um, it was a great experience. Now, your mother was a piano teacher? Mom was a piano teacher. And, Mom, and actually, I uh, went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts for in New York. In New York yeah. for one semester and went, uh, nah, not for me. But I think that's where it, the whole thing comes from. And my father never understood us. <laughs> so he is an executive VP with Metropolitan Life Insurance. Oh, so he really was the another side of the brain. Yes, entirely. he's the other side of the brain. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, but that actually makes me, a, I think, a better business person, which is, I think, the mistake that I made when I was just an actor was that I was just creative and, you know, you could be flaky because you're an actor, right? And, of course, that we know all those <laughs> things are such huge mistakes. I, th I think the reason I love to teach is because I get to share the things that I did wrong. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so that's interesting. Yeah. So the, that, there's so. a realization now mm -hmm. <coughs> of, of those mistakes. Like, if you had a chance to go back and and redo them, you would do them completely differently. This I time. mean, some things I would do the same. I, I think the creative aspects are, are things that most people do well. I think that where people fall down is the business side of it, a lot of it. And I think that's, we're both in agreement on that. And they don't understand that they're running a business, you know? And um, you're, you're running a business, you're the CEO of that business, you're the main commodity of that business, and you have to market that business, and you have to understand how to market this product that you have to the buyer, which is me. Yep. And, uh, and I kind of just look at the way some people market their product, and it's a, a little, you know, what are you thinking, you know? And do you not understand where you fit? Do you not understand what type you are? Do you not understand what you should be going after and all those things? I'm probably jumping way ahead, aren't I? Yes, but okay. it's, it, no, it's okay, because <laughs> it, 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 it bears <clears throat> repeating. The, part of the problem is that the schools aren't teaching it. Thankfully, Emerson College, thankfully, is te we're teaching mm -hmm. this. Uh, but I'm not aware that there's a movement to teach this stuff at yeah. the colleges who are teaching um, acting, performing arts, that sort, of, that sort of course study, that there seems to be such a focus on performance. And even beyond that, that there's such a focus on performance for theater mm -hmm. that there's a to me, I'm seeing that there's a big missing element in just even teaching kids how to perform on camera right. to be able to have those careers. That, and, and there's a disconnect between what, what is needed to have a career in the business and what's in many places still being taught in the classroom. Right. I, I would say yes and no. I think there's some movement towards bringing the professional side to it. I teach um, at UCLA, I teach auditioning for the professional musical theater. And it's the last semester of their senior year and the kids who are in the musical theater program uh, get to work with me as a casting director, mm -hmm. and then I bring in all these guests, you know, uh, artistic directors and directors and producers and agents. And so um, UCLA, I think, is at least you know making an effort to get these kids ready. But they're all already in Los Angeles. I think they already have a mm -hmm. kind of a you know, an advantage that they kind of understand how the business works from being here. There's a, well, there's an awareness because they're immersed. It's, it's around us. And right. We're immersed. There's in No way to get around it. Yeah. Right. But I think other schools in other parts of the country maybe 
you know, don't think about that as much. And um, I was teaching a college class yesterday, actually, and I was asking uh, some of the students, um, <coughs> what's, <coughs> excuse me, what's your age range? And, and one girl says, well, 7 to 70. And I went, you know, maybe in college, you know, I said, but you need to understand this is the real world and your age range is maybe three to five years, maybe five, you know. Yeah. So you need to kind of understand that you now need to approach this from a professional standpoint. What do I really play? And you need to know that when you yeah. sit down with an agent or a manager right. or a casting director. Mm -hmm. kind of well, part of it, too, <coughs> is that in colleges, just because the, the, the scope of work that's being done in, in the college platform is, um, as a college student, I could play Tevya, mm -hmm. right? But out in the real world, they're going to hire somebody who's that age range, as you say, right. to be able to do that because they have to be believable in the part. I mean, it's the same thing's happening in high school theater mm -hmm. all over the country. And, and the, it, it, to me, it sort of fuels the frustration. I'm jumping ahead, too. Mm -hmm. But in the transition from the student to the performing arts to the professional performing artist, I mean, there's a whole other level of, of transition frustration, too, and that sort of actors who've been doing this a while and go, hmm, how come I feel kind of stuck? But we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. So you started out initially, you were going to be an actor. You were going to be a working actor. Absolutely. And it actually got out of school and went to New York mm -hmm. and, and did that work. I worked. So was that satisfying for you? Were you making the kind of money you thought you would make? Were you getting the kind of sort of work opportunities that you thought would be coming to you? Uh, the, 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 yes and no. <laughs> um, I, That's a good answer. I really, uh, I had, I guess, an advantage in that I looked a lot younger than I was, so I was able to play kids. Um, the disadvantage of that is that um, ten years later I was still playing kids, and it was I was really feeling uh, this is getting frustrating for me because I was still competing with that huge group that mm -hmm. just comes out of college. You know, as you get older, that group begins to drop away and, you know, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but no, I worked, um, I worked a lot, actually. I did a, I, I did a few uh, tours. I did kids theater. I did dinner theater. I did uh, some regional. I did some commercials. And, and, and then um, decided to move to Los Angeles to pursue a career in film and television and got a ton of theater work. <laughs> so, so I, I want to, yeah. yeah so. I'm going to back up a little yeah. bit. So the decision to... Um, leave New York uh -huh. and, and, and make the move out, out here uh -huh. in L.A. Well, what was, what was that like? Did people, were they supportive? Did they think you were crazy? Did you, I mean, what was going on in your own head that you said, you know, all right, I'm, I'm done here. It was time to make that move. Um, I think that, um, well, I'm from right outside New York City, so um, California was a big change for me, and there was something appealing about mm -hmm. that. Uh, I kind of came here kicking and screaming though. I was in a relationship, and which I'm still in the same relationship, and we came together to Los Angeles and to just kind of see, let's give it a shot. Let's come out here and see what it's like, and if it works, great, and if it doesn't work, okay. Yeah. Now let's go back, you know? And so that, it was a, kind of an experiment to see. And uh, talk about a baptism of fire. Mm -hmm. Well, Every, I, yeah, you know, <coughs> I, I, that, to me, that falls in the, in the category of uh, Managing one's expectations, which hasn't changed since the time that you did this not so long ago. It's a while ago. And, and, and <laughs> Thank you for being so kind, but it's a while ago. <laughs> um, and, to, and what happens now with kids getting out of school who make the, the trek to L.A., mm -hmm. there's um, the anticipation, but there's also... Um, the the they, there's no expectations managed because there's only expectations. There's not the reality of what happens, which is clearly what happened to you when you got here. What was the first wake up call? Uh, having to buy a car that uh, uh, two weeks later needed oh three thousand dollars worth of work. Uh, buying an apartment with hookers screaming below my window at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, rent, <laughs> renting an apartment. Sorry. And it was just like, okay, uh, putting aside a bunch of money to come out here because we were smart and ran through it in six weeks and we're going, ah! you know, so uh, it was just, uh, okay, welcome to L.A. And we thought, yeah. and we'd, we'd given up a beautiful apartment in New York and uh, that we'd lucked into and we're like, what have we done, you know? But I also want to respond to that too because I think, um, I think there's a lot of people telling you, you know, you've got to put in your time, you've got to pay your dues, you've got to do all that stuff. And the truth is, a lot of that's bullshit. The truth is that there are those people who book immediately. 
there are those people who come in and, you know, for whatever reason, they have that stroke of luck and bang, they're in. So I, I think the usual course, absolutely, is that you're going to have to pay your dues, put in your time, mm -hmm. do all that effort. That's the usual route. But I don't want somebody to limit themselves from thinking that th this is something that could happen at any time, you know, which is why you need to be prepared as much as you can be for it to happen mm -hmm. at any time. But the anticipation, because they this word expectation, mm -hmm. uh, again also, I think on a lot of the kids um, now is that, that, of course that will happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to get so it serious tomorrow, right? right. right. And so, yeah. uh, as as we're having this conversation, it's sort of at the end of the semester and graduation right. time from my own class that I'm teaching, and you know they're all sort of getting this. Um, if you, my fellow Jews, will get spilkas, they're getting spilkas in their genetikazoid. <laughs> Even you know what that means, right? Passover week, and you're saying yes, Passover. Right. <laughs> okay, you're saying that. That's appropriate. Ants in their pants. They're getting antsy <laughs> because the the assumption is that they will graduate on May 19th and May 20th, the job, you know, the job offers... They're going to be on the next Friends. Right, 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 yeah, right. exactly. And so the part of that, the, manage, the management of those expectations is the realization that for most people that's, that's not going to happen. And then for the people who, who it does happen, I mean, we see them once in a while. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the, the, the look is right, or they walk in and the, they match the family type, mm -hmm. the family they're putting together, or it's just... They've got Some an amazing look, or they're incredibly beautiful, or handsome, and got a great body, or whatever, and so all of a sudden, like bang, exactly, right. perfect. And then all of a sudden, they're in, but they're clueless about what just happened, yeah. you know, and then the series doesn't last, and all of a sudden, now they're, they've been a series regular, they've got expectations that are through the roof, and to match that again is really tough, yeah. and that's where I think there's a hard dose of reality comes in. Well, and you know, it repeats itself. Um, later in life and it can because there are people who become working actors yeah. who achieve some level of, of, of success whatever however you define that mm -hmm. um, and then the series ends or the job ends and then you know the the management of those expectations about well how come I, nobody's hiring me yeah. why can't i get a job why can't i even get an audition and then having been away from the process of doing that part of the business it, it breeds a lot of depression and a lot of frustration and a lot of <clears throat> will I ever work again? And so, you know, to, uh, I, as I see it, you know, we, we're, we have the sort of two kinds of actor populations. We have the kids coming out who are just trying to find their footing and begin their careers. And then we have a lot of the actors who have, re have received mm -hmm. and achieved some success and then it goes. Mm -hmm. And they're used to working. And, and it's a know, very hard thing to go through. Yeah. yeah. The thing that um, I'm assuming we're going to be talking to a lot of young people who are going to watch this, I have two recent examples of, of people that I, I can show the contrast of what you do with that kind of success. Um, one um, got a tour that I cast, and one it was one of my students at UCLA two years ago, and they both got tours right out of college and making really nice money. One of them is making, um, I think close to 2,000 a week, and the other one's making about 2,500 a week. You know, coming out of college, that's that's great bucks. You know, um, one of them has been in uh, on his tour now for 18 months, and one of them has been on his tour for a year. The one who's been on a tour for a year has not saved a dime, not a dime. And the other guy's got investments, and he's got uh, you know money markets and all this Smarter stuff. Actor. Yeah, because the thing yeah. about it was he understands that this is not forever. He understands that at some point, you're not going to want to be on tour for the rest of your life. So at some point, he's going to want to come back to Los Angeles or go to New York, whatever, and, and start to do other things. Right. So now he comes back to L.A. or goes to New York with a ton of money in his pocket. You know, The other guy's got to stay on that tour because he's got to continue to pay the bills. And it's an incredible opportunity for some of these you know, young folks to come out of college and just grab a job like that and just mm -hmm. sock it away. You know? and I if think they're smart. If they're smart, yeah. And I know it's hard. You know, you... There's all these toys available and things you want to buy and cars and, you know, and cool laptops and iPods and iPhones and everything else. You know, okay, buy a few of those things, but then understand that some of it you got to put away. And I'm speaking as somebody who didn't do it. I know I didn't do it, and I know that that was a big mistake. You know, trying to find that happy medium in which you are enjoying, you know, making money, but also being long range. Yeah. You know, 
Wouldn't it be nice to go back to L.A. or move to New York and not have to be a waiter because you made so much money in that first tour that you did? So. There are series actors, too, who are in that situation who go, go through the money. And, yeah. But that's, we talk about smart actor versus stupid actor. Next time when we get together, I want to talk about uh, the, really how the casting business came to you because yeah, there's, sure. there's all of this wisdom and there's all of this perspective that comes with the luxury of um, what I call sort of the view in from the rear view mirror, which I think is very helpful to actors of any stage yeah. watching us. So coming up in segment two with Michael Donovan, we will talk more about that. In the meantime, uh, if you want some information about Michael, you can find that on the resources page on our website at thebusinessofacting.com. I'm Brad Lamack. Join us next time.